Hey everybody, just doing a quick update today. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of progress done on my civilians for musket and tomahawks, the gentlemen and ladies, but part of that is just I've been on vacation the last week. It's been somewhat of a staycation, but I, I did travel about two to three hours away for a couple of days, but then um, I've had family in town during this time, so um, essentially uh, I just really haven't had a lot of whole, a lot of time to be able to, to do any hobby stuff. Um, but having said that, I did make some choices on these, and I, I have actually spent a, a little bit of time on them. So I'll just show where I'm at individually with them. So this one, um, I've decided to um, go with a series of grays, uh, black hat, white gloves, and then just sort of light gray on the trim. And then apparently women didn't really wear the wigs. Um, in the 1700s or 18th century, um, but they did powder their hair gray, um, similar to in the way men wore um, powdered wigs. And so this one, I do, I am having her um, hair powdered, um, is what I decided. And so, did that. Now this one will be a, um, um, horse similar to the one I did before, so I've just made the bridle black. I have only done the base paint um, on the horse itself, um, and this is meant to be the same miniature, so same choices here. So this guy went with a brown haircut um, and a bit of an ivory shirt with a brown jacket, light brown, lighter brown jacket, and red pants. I noticed that white, red, and gray, and black um, tend to be in a lot of the hunting and outdoors pictures, you know, for that time period. So I incorporated a lot of those colors, although I didn't use them exclusively. So this horse is meant to be a gray horse. I'm going to be whitening it up quite a bit and working on the um, the horse color itself. This is just the base paint. I really like the way these are painting up. Um, it's funny sometimes you don't really you don't get a good picture until you start putting paint on. But really, the it's been bringing out the details nicely um, of the miniature quite like them. So this one is going to have a powdered wig and um, I ended up going for different shades of green which is very different than like I kind of just elected to do that. Um, so both for the gloves and the jacket. So that's not really from photographs or anything. Um, I just thought that it would look nice, and um, so he's not going to be for the red coats or the French uh, necessarily. It could be for either, and that's the way most of my civilians are. I don't really have like civilians for one side and the other. They're just I try to make them useful for both sides as much as possible. And this one will also be dark brown like the other one I painted, the British officer. So I gave, I made this one a brunette as far as the female. Um, her jacket is very different than the other one. It definitely has a less frilly stuff on the edges as the other woman who um, I've sort of painted to be a bit older, I think. Um, but um, I've just lightened up the yellow that I went with a bit. I actually quite like this. I saw a portrait of someone from this time period that had a very similar dress. This really reminds me of a bit of a riding outfit, an outdoorsy outfit. It's kind of cool. Now this one is going to be chestnut, and I actually used a yellow, a sandy yellow 
um, for the the mane and the tail. Um, I'm going to have a lot of work to do on the chestnut just to bring this up a little bit differently. Um, I've just used a standard brown right now, but I'm going to be making it more red, reddish browned, brown, um, through wet blending and such. So that's really it. Um, I don't think these will take me too much longer, although I will spend some time, like I mentioned, doing the wet blending. Um, that will take some time. And then basing. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, I did do one other thing, and um, I have, uh, for those of you that are familiar with Kablam's channel, um, I saw a video he did a while ago about making a dice tray. And um, I happened to be at Walmart just getting some supplies. And um, what I ended up doing, sorry, I just had to grab it, but I ended up getting a picture frame from Walmart. It cost me about $7. And um, I removed the glass from it, and I ended up also getting... They had this, it's fairly inexpensive, for 2 to $3, they had several sheets of all different colors of felt that, um, it's a fairly thin felt, but it has an elastic um, backing to it that you can pull off. And so I just took the wood that would be on the back of the picture frame, I ripped the little stand off, and um, ended up putting um, this felt on. And I'll tell you, you know, I wanted something for my games that I could just dedicate for dice rolling, and it works really good. Um, I mean, it does what it's supposed to, and um, but I probably spent seven, eight dollars on it. Now, I had looked online for these, and they had like kind of octagon, octagon-shaped ones and different things, and um, they ran actually quick. A quick browse, it was like thirty dollars, thirty-five, even forty in some cases. So, I really thought this was a good solution. So, um, that was great that he put up that video because um, I wouldn't have thought to do this otherwise. So, all right. Hope everyone's having a good one. Take care.